behind Fluffy Pigeon Art. Today we are going to be creating a floral composition inspired by these straw flowers. So I'm going to start with yellow centers on these. Actually I'm going to start with my filbert brush by making nice round centers. Actually to be fair I'm going to make nice round circles Maybe a side circle, kind of like this. And then maybe some tops that are flat, kind of that side view. Inside, I'm gonna paint them a little bit more yellow. I can either connect these parts or, <clears throat> excuse me, I can just kind of let them sit and connect them later. Down here, I'm gonna give this a bit. I didn't really mean to mix, I didn't actually clean that enough. But I'm gonna do a little mix and I'm gonna give this some base here for that side view. And I'll fix that up in just a little bit. Make it a little bit more defined. I'm gonna add shadow here to the bottom of this one, this little straw flower. My children um, like to call straw flowers fake because they do not feel soft. They've actually got this um, really stiff plasticky feel to them, which is kind of cool and interesting. All right, so I'm gonna change up my petal brush. These um, are pretty small petals. I might go with a cat's eye. If you have a round brush, that would work just as well. Actually, no, I think I will stick with the round brush. I'll just make them short. Um, this is more of a red. I'm using Aussie Red, Golden Red by Daniel Smith today. Mm, so for this one, I'm going to make these guys. There's a few layers on this. So I'm going to just make some little lines here. Just to kind of give that top view. And then I'm going to start probably making some swoops. You can kind of see I'm pointing my petals downward. It is not a perfect practice. I will make mistakes. I am certain I will do things that I am unhappy with today. I always do. Sometimes it works out and the work looks amazing anyways. And sometimes it doesn't and that's okay too. Now notice I'm starting to turn and point these petals upward as we wrap around that center. Little strokes, kind of like V's, upside down V's. And that one feels pretty good right now. I'm gonna leave that alone for a few minutes. I might come back to it later. I'm gonna start adding some of these side ones. I'm gonna curl these up right away because that's what I'm seeing when I look at this on the side. So I'm gonna curl it up. I'm gonna layer some of it over this um, burnt yellow underneath. Uh, I don't have a ton that I can see from the back, so I'm just gonna kind of stick with the side and the front of this here. And then I've got quite a few sticking out on the bottom, so I'm gonna do that as well. This time these are like long Vs. These are not upside down Vs. These are regular size Vs. See them pop it around there. I'm gonna come back to this one. I'm actually gonna add a darker color here. You'll notice I've got kind of the scope on my, well, you probably can't see it. I have the scope on my palette of every orange from um, yellow cool to really hot reddish orange on my palette. So I'm gonna drop these down, get just a little bit darker here, partially because in um, figure or picture that I have here, it gets significantly redder on the bottom of that straw flower. 
I want to make sure these are kind of tucked away. So now I'm just going to do some, I need a little bit wetter. I'm going to do some strokes underneath in between these V's that I made to make more V's. Just a little bit more just to give it some depth. You could just do line strokes here if you wanted as well. I'm now gonna go back to the center. Try and define this a little bit more. You can see I have too much water here. So I'm gonna try and drag some of that out. You run the brush along the puddle, pull, and dab on your paper towel. Okay. So I'm gonna do this little bit of yellow here with I think a little bit of this um, raw umber. I'm gonna give it a little shadow up here and then a little bit more shadow down here. So a shadow behind the center circle and inside the center circle um, towards the top. I'm gonna do it here a little bit as well, but this is more for definition I'm gonna make some lines here. I wanna try and get it dark, so I'm using that raw umber brownie color. It's still not dark enough. It might be because it's too wet. That's entirely possible. Don't mind the cats. They will keep sticking their heads in here. Um, and then I think what we'll do, hey, don't move my camera, you knucklehead. Some yellow in there, a little bit of yellow. She really ruined this. She actually may have ruined this setup. Sorry, guys. At least she's cute. Uh, I'm going to darken up these top ones here just because I know that I want it to look a little bit more dimensional up in this section. So far, so good. Pretty happy with those. Now, as far as what do I want to add next? Mm, what is this color over here? It's a dark red. The stems on these are very sap green, so, or gold green. So I'm gonna do that. Do I do that first? No. Let's do just the blooms first, and then we'll come back in and do that. All right. So the next bloom I'm gonna do, don't touch the camera, cutie. Stop. Stop, sweetheart. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to do some feather weeds or like they're like feathery weeds. Let's see what I got here. What's this one? Hmm. Don't have a ton of purple on this palette. So what we'll do is we'll take this blue and we'll add it to this red over here and make kind of a rusty purple. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this featherweed, which is kind of like lots of line strokes coming off a collected center. Oh, good gracious, do not eat the paint. I'm gonna make a couple of these. <clears throat> um, they do tend to they are very much like straw flowers in that they are very dry feeling. Make a couple of these. I'm a little shorter than this one. I'm gonna fill in some of these. I don't like how thin some of them are, so I'm just gonna make a little thicker of a brush stroke around some of these to give it a little bit more softness. Again, the cat is rubbing her face on my camera setup because why not? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I think right here, I'm gonna do a sunflower. Right here in the center, um, just to give it something big that these are kind of hiding behind. So I'm gonna use my filbert brush again for that center. I think I'm gonna use this brown color. Let's see how that looks. I can go back in and play up or change this up if I want. I'm gonna make this one nice and big. I'm gonna try and make this inside part a little bit darker. And for right now, if that's red, I can go back and add some blue and it'll make it a little bit more brown or purpley. You're probably thinking, what are you doing? You've got like a purple center on this thing. 
that just doesn't seem right. It's really okay. Color mixing lets you do all kinds of things. So I'm gonna add yellow to this now. And yellow and purple make kind of a brownie color. I keep mixing in here. Blue and orange make brown as well. So we'll do that, we'll do this. Okay, now that I've like mixed and mixed and mixed and made it somewhat palatable, I'm going to grab my shader brush. My shader brush is gonna make some really lovely sunflower leaves. You can make them as big or as short as you'd like. When it comes to these flowers already being here and kind of covering up the area, I'm gonna assume that the sunflower kind of is chucked and some flowers sometimes have these like folded areas. If they kind of work their leaves around things, so that's okay. And sometimes they just tuck under anyways, they start curling. I'm gonna add more um, different types of yellow to this, by the way. You can see the play on this um, shader brush. It just gives these wild curls or turns, which I really like. Right. And then I'm gonna start adding some warmer yellows, just a little bit. I just added um, this, I don't even remember what it's called off the top of my head, but it's more of an orangey yellow. I mixed it up a little bit with my lemon yellow. I found I don't love cool yellows. I love warm yellows. I would have never known that about myself until I started painting actively and finding my preferences. All right, let's grab this guy. We're gonna grab this browner color. This, this one is raw sienna, but I'm gonna add it to the lemon yellow. It's gonna start giving some more darker pigments to this sunflower. You can use the tip of these shader brushes to do cool things as well. Layer, 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 layer. And then I have a cat hair on here, so don't mind me. I might have to get that later. Get off, off, off. Nope, all right, well. Sometimes this happens with brushes too. I'll get it off later when it's dry, okay. Um, I do wanna make this a little bit more shaded, partially because it's hidden underneath that flower there. And then I might flip a couple of these under as well. Do you see how I'm curling some of these? It's because sunflowers are known for those flowers to start to curl under. And it just gives it this realistic feel. Sideways, down. Okay. I'm gonna tackle this center a little bit more. I'm gonna use red and blue on my palette to make this darker brown. There we go. And that was by mixing red and blue. When you mix complementary colors or opposite colors on the color wheel, you get brown. So red and green make brown, yellow and purple make brown, blue and orange make black brown. This is like the basic, like I could, I, there are far better experts about this than I am. But this is the most basic level of, this is what makes brown if it's on your palette, if you're looking for a brown, this is what you do. Okay, I'm gonna clean that out a little bit, come back and play with that in a bit. I'm gonna start adding some greens. I believe the screen I'm using right now is under sea green. Um, we know that sunflowers have lots of greenery around them. I am going to, yeah, I'm gonna give it a stem vibe. I like stem vibes, I'm not sure why. I think it just feels most comfortable for me rather than just doing a um, composition with leaves around it. And then I'm gonna start making the leaves that like to curl around sunflowers or from the stems. I might just pop this one up too. 
Notice I'm kind of going around and behind the sunflower leaves that I already painted. I'm using the tip of my shader and then I'm just gonna curl this down and then I'll finish coming around the back in here and then I can soften up any of these edges that I created when I was trying to fill it in like that. Okay. Then I'm gonna grab some of these. We'll change up the green a little bit. We'll add maybe a little bit of yellow to this green. And so this will be a lighter green color, kind of olivey. Not that that's a word, but olive colored. And we'll pull these back in. I like to start from the top and curve them in like this. Just follow their natural progression without actually touching the rest of the painting while I'm doing that. This will curve in as well. I'm kind of tucking that behind that one. And then we'll have these little feather guys. They have kind of a purpley red bottom to them. Let's add some blue to that purple. We'll pop these back here. You can see all the feathery undertones that are darker. That. Probably just gonna make another feathery one, don't mind me. Just because I made those three stems down there. Is it going to let me, is the question. It's kind of blue, that's okay. I'll add some more blue tones up there. I'll grab some of that red again that. I'm adding shadows behind, adding more to this. You'll see I added some blue. Blue is always good to have on hand as a mixer. I use cerulean blue a lot. I like that one. <laughs> I'm gonna add some more detail here, more detail here. I might just be done. I mean, I can always go back and play with it a little bit more, like with anything. Okay, add line work. Let's see some of that. You could leave it alone. You do no line work at all. Sometimes I do line work and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? And little dotty dots to the center to give it more texture. The wetter the center is, obviously, the less it will stay and it'll just blend into everything else. I might add a little bit of darker tone to this, like in here, just to give it some definition. So you can add some line work in there, go around the edges. Like that. You can do it teeny tiny. You can do all of it and more. You can see. I'm I'm kind of, I'm loose and careless a little bit, and it kind of gives it an it feels more okay when you're loose and careless with the result than if you're not. If it looks like you're trying to make it perfect and you don't feel that strong in your art um journey then loose and careless feels more natural. It just looks better. It looks like it was intentional. And I think that's kind of how I got into this art and just not what you want to say industry. Art world was through allowing myself to find avenues for pleasure, even though I didn't always, for the most part, when I started, I didn't love everything that I did. So here we are. Here's your little composition. I could probably add more, but I think I'm going to leave it for today. Have a great day. Thanks for putting up with my cats.